This tutorial will help you convert between the SI system, the international system, and the American or English system that is used here. In order to convert between an SI and an American or English unit, we can't simply move the decimal place because the equivalencies are not in bases of 10. There is no set pattern. So we, what we have to use are conversion factors or equivalencies, just like currency values from one currency in one country to another. Or simply saying 10 dimes is equivalent to $1, or there are 10 dimes in $1. This many of one unit equals this many of another unit. Here are a few more examples that we'll be utilizing in this particular segment. Now you can look these up in different references, but they typically are found in textbook chapters covering conversions and are typically found also in the inside covers of textbooks. In order to convert between SI and American units, we have to implement and utilize a method called dimensional analysis, which is simply nothing more than conversion by method of ratio, using ratios to convert units. And so what we end up doing is we are given a unit in a particular problem, and we're trying to convert from that unit into a new unit, the desired unit. So what we do is we always write the given unit first and then we multiply by our conversion factor, which we will write in a ratio or fractional format. Remember, each conversion factor has two parts. For example, one inch equals 2.54 centimeters. One would be the top, and one would be the bottom of our fraction. How do we know what goes on top and what goes on the bottom? Remember that your given unit is the unit that you are trying to eliminate. So you will always put that part of the conversion factor on the bottom, such that they line up diagonally and then can cancel out. The unit you want to keep goes on top. The unit you want to eliminate again goes on the bottom. When these two get eliminated, you're left with a desired unit and the answer to your problem. So let's take a look at these two examples. 4.5 kilograms equals how many pounds? Well. 4.5 kilograms is the given, so we're going to write that first and foremost. Multiplied by, we look up our conversion factor. Every one kilogram is the equivalent of 2.2 pounds. So, one kilogram will be one part of my fraction, 2.2 pounds will be the other. Again, this is a conversion factor, and it will make up the two halves, the top and bottom of my fraction or my conversion factor. Since 4.5 kilograms is my given unit, I will line them up such that the bottom of this particular fraction will be the kilogram. So one kilogram on the bottom, 2.2 pounds on top. Kilograms are eliminated, and then we will multiply everything on the top and divide by everything on the bottom, just like multiplying two regular fractions. 4.5 times 2.2 is 9.9 .9, divided by 1 is 9.9. .9. The only unit remaining, of course, is the desired unit, which is pounds. In this example, we're going to take 100 kilometers and convert it to miles. Again, I look up my conversion factor, which happens to be 1.61 kilometers equals 1 mile. My given unit is kilometer, so there's 100 kilometers times a conversion factor. Kilometers will be on the bottom so they can be eliminated, crossed out diagonally, over on top is one mile. Again, multiply the top, 100 times 1 is 100, divided by 1.61 is 62. Since the kilometers have been eliminated, miles is my remaining unit, which again was the unit I was solving for, or my desired unit. This is a very, very simple method of converting one unit to another and can not only be utilized here to convert between one unit and another, but can be used throughout the uh, chemistry courses and other science courses to convert between different types of units, not just these kinds of measurement units. Sometimes we have more than one unit we'd like to convert at a time. A multiple conversion. Multiple conversions do use the same method, which happens to be 
dimensional analysis. When you have more than one unit, you simply have to take some additional steps and have a multiple conversion or multiple step problem. But the process is really the same. In our example, 60 miles per hour to kilometers per second. 60 miles per hour is our given unit. Miles on top the fractional line being per hour. We'll start off by converting miles into the kilometers and then work our way through the hours. Again, try to work with one unit at a time to avoid making careless errors. 60 miles times, I uh, will use my conversion factor of miles to kilometers such that miles is in the bottom so I can eliminate these and 1.61 kilometers will be on top. Now I have kilometers per hour. Kilometers is what I want, but hours needs to go. I would like to convert hours to seconds. So let's try to convert hours to seconds. I know that every one hour contains 60 minutes. So since hour is in the bottom, I'd like to have hour on the top. Again, make sure they line up. Since this was on the bottom, one hour will go on top, 60 minutes on the bottom. Hours are now eliminated and I'm left with minutes but still I need one more conversion to get minutes to seconds. So one minute is equivalent to 60 seconds. Minute on the bottom, I'll put minute on the top and 60 seconds on the bottom of my fraction. At the end, minutes will cancel one another, leaving me only with kilometers and seconds, which really was my desired unit. Multiply everything on the top. 60 times 1.61, which is then multiplied by one and one, and in the bottom, I have 1 times 60 times 60, which is 3,600. Multiply the top, divide by the product of the bottom, and you should end up with 0 0.027 kilometers per second.